tonight on Space Cadets. There's an intruder on board the shuttle. Yes, gang, I'm going in. Hello and welcome to Space Cadets. There are the Space Cadets just sitting there. There's been uh, our Russian, actually, uh, Pilot Ivanovich, has taken to wearing eyeliner now. I don't know if you remember yesterday I told you he started putting nail varnish off. Va nail varnish on. Well, it's, his dress has got uh, increasingly bizarre. He actually had teaspoons dangling down for his cap earlier with like, thick eyeliner on. Anyway, they've been up there for 48 hours now, which means that uh, if they're in a genuine shuttle travelling at 28,000 kilometres an hour, they would have travelled 1,344,000 miles and orbited Earth 33 times. But of course, we know they're not in a genuine shuttle hurtling its way through space. They're actually in an MDF simulator wobbling away merrily in Suffolk. Now, the cadets have gone nowhere. Nonetheless, they seem to be a very happy crew and they're settling into the life of a cosmonaut with effortless ease. Watch out here for Charlie's crumpled face. The cadets have been in space for 15 hours. Everyone's asleep, bar actor pilot Drew, who's keeping the shuttle on track. Capcom Krimsk to Earth Orbital 1, to Brye Utra, and good morning. Welcome to your first morning aboard Earth Orbital 1. There's no sign of life. Voices is not a sound Can you hear me now? This is planet Earth You're looking at planet Earth ba, 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 ba. This is planet Earth Get up, Tom. The morning wake up, um, we had a song played to us this morning, which was brilliant. Uh, it really like livens the spirit. It makes you aware again of where you are and how lucky we are. Um, and it, it was just brilliant. Ah, <laughs> oh, the great sounds there of Duran Duran. I think the producers, actually, missed a trick there. It would have been uh, great if the cadets had been looking out the cockpit window and seen Simon Le Bon and the boys sailing past in a space yacht, surrounded by bikini-clad space lovelies singing about a gal named Rio. Or maybe flaps had opened up and guys with Mohicans and bum flaps just came and go, Oh, boys! Just no ambition, is there? OK, back to the cadets, uh, where the shuttle gets a visit from an extraterrestrial, a weird-looking creature in a stripy jumper and headphones called Sarah. Just after breakfast, disaster strikes. Flight Commander Ivanovich's earpiece, the only way we can communicate with him in the shuttle, has failed. Drew is able to relay a message from us to tell Ivanovich to make his way to the lab and await further instruction. Very good. Well, why, why do I not do it for you? Because I will go through there. All right, you can. All right. <laughs> Drew is left behind in the mid deck to cover. Only inches away, Drew must keep the cadets distracted whilst the problem is rectified. Every time you have a wee, maybe take a look back and check the color, and if it's uh, dark or very yellow, uh, then you probably need to take on more liquid. Mm -hmm. Ivanovich, an actor called Alex from South London, has no idea how we're going to resolve the situation until our production manager appears through a secret door we've installed for emergencies. Forever the method actor, Ivanovich remains in character as attempts are made to fix his problem earpiece. Drew is informed about this orders. We can recycle most most of the water we put That's through right. yeah. uh, to a point before we start, you know, you know, having problems with the filters. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's it's you know, if we stayed up longer, uh, you know, it's just in case. You know, another contingency. But I want to get cold creams, do you read me? In the mid-deck, 
Drew resorts to recounting stories of his childhood. You know, when I when I was young and a teenager, I you know I used to go on canoe trips or I'd go camping. Yeah. So. And, and I'd see people, you know, haul up a you know a big RV or a Winnebago yeah. to a campground. You know, it takes away plug the in their the their televisions and their satellite dishes. I want to the Capcom creams. Do you read me? Yes, I read you. I read you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Atobita uh, One, for um, whatever covering uh, my. With the headset up and running, Ivanovich just in time returns to save Drew who's now moved on to a song and dance routine. Oh, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Do or Die. Oh, your hands are really cold. OK, OK, OK. Sarah. OK, do you know, that would worry me. You've just had three weeks training. You find yourself in a space shuttle 124 miles above the Earth. And of the two people charged with your safety, one speaks cryptic nonsense and disappears, and the other one seems to have turned into Lionel Blair. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know where the mission commander finds his pilots. OK, it's time for a break. When we return, there's more twitching from behind the wardrobe. Don't go away. Okay. You now have one minute to decide which balloon sculpture you wish to make. You may choose to make one of your own. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to make a... Um Probably something of my own devising. Oh, yeah, I might even get um, carried away. What? That's a hat. That's a hat, yeah. Okay, cool. Hello there, welcome back to Space Cadets. Three weeks ago, Billy was a recruitment consultant, Kerry a college administrator, and Paul a plasterer. But after intensive training at a fake training facility, they are now all highly trained cosmonauts and experts in scientific experimentation. Of course, if you've got it, you want to flaunt it. So all the cadets were delighted when Mission Control set them their very first scientific challenge. At last, their opportunity to further mankind's understanding of the universe in which we live. Would cosmonaut Paul please make his way directly to the lab to begin the first experiment? <laughs> Mission Control wants the cosmonauts to perform a manual dexterity test to see if they're capable of carrying out delicate and complex scientific experiments on board the shuttle. So, the obvious way of testing this out is to get the cosmonauts to build balloon animals in the fume cupboard wearing uh, thick rubber gloves. Right, uh, we had our first experiment. I had to make a balloon uh, puppy, and what happened is, that it's not, I swear to God, this is true, it's not my fault. I came in, and I opened up the box, I, did, I read all, all the instructions, and then I got the box out, I got the pump out, it just broke. <laughs> I've accidentally broke my pump, but I'm going to try and do it without it, because there was something wrong with my pump anyway, to be fair. Sorry, Capcom Crimps. And um, I sort of messed up the experiment, but I managed to blow up the remainder of the balloons <coughs> and put them inside the the tank, so that Kerry and, and Billy could could do their next experiment. Capcom will now begin the five-minute countdown in five, four, three, two, one. Begin. Capcom crimps got finished. After the minor pump hitch, Paul surprises everyone by making a puppy in under five minutes. Cosmonaut go, Billy is next to take part in the experiment. First up, I couldn't blow up the balloon. I'm just for the life of me, I was stretching. I just couldn't blow it up. I didn't know what was going on. My face was going red in camera. And then I used one of Paul's ones that he blew up previously. And then I was made a dog. I got to the neck and leg. I'd done the body in two legs. And it popped on me. <laughs> Earth went to Capcom Crimps, the bloom popped. Oh, that sucks. Capcom Crimps to Cosmonaut Billy, your time is up. Remove your hands from the gloves and take your completed sculpture out of the fume cabinet. Here he comes. Where's your balloon? I'm showing you it. What is it? I'll show you. Is it a giraffe? 
What happened to me? What happened to it? Is it a condom? It's, uh, it's a pig's condom. It's, uh, it's a pig's... It's a worm. It's a pig's tail. <laughs> Why did you burst it? It popped after about a minute. It was getting Capcom Grimms, because to, to Rare Formula 1, you have one minute left, and 30 seconds later it popped. So that was pretty gutting. I don't like not doing things, but... Oh well, chin up. No big deal. Next, it's Cosmonaut Kerry's turn. As you will be aware, due to a pump malfunction, we are currently operating a plan B on this experiment. Uh, we will not ask you to inflate your own balloon, but instead to use the pre-inflated balloon which is lying on the work surface. Hi Capcom, I'm having a problem closing the fume cupboard doors. Capcom, Krimsk to Cosmonaut Kerry, please verify that the fume cupboard door is completely closed before you attempt to secure it. Hi Capcom, I've completed that task. I am now placing my hands in the gloves. Capcom, I am now ready to begin. Please begin the experiment in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, begin. Thank you. My balloons burst. I'm, I don't think I've got bad hands, but I, my my <laughs> my balloon like deflated within two minutes. I was trying to do the ears, and they kept like just un unraveling. <laughs> First one burst, and um, and then I couldn't blow them up. I'm like, I must look such an idiot. Actor Charlie is last to conduct the experiment. As the mission's going so well, it was a perfect opportunity to push the boundaries of believability by giving Charlie a little help. You now have one minute to decide which balloon sculpture you wish to make. You may choose to make one um, of your own. Yeah, I think I'm going to make a, um, probably something of my own devising. Oh, yeah, I might even get um, carried away. As far as everything in my brain and body knows, I'm in space. And then I look over there and a guy's handing me a, a balloon animal. And it just sort of sheared through my experience and was quite shocking. It was a shock to me. Um, and, yeah, I was a little bit just unsettled. I know that sounds ridiculous because I'm being unsettled, snapped back to, to reality. Here's where my years of training as an actor really kick in. <sighs> They're not going to believe I've done this. I think my lungs are not made in the same way. <laughs> yes, that's okay. Hey! Gospody! That's cool, Charlie. It started off as an elephant. Then I realised it was actually more of a hat. And I know it sounds childish, but the look on Billy's face when I uh, played about with the hat and put the elaborate balloon hat on his head, and he had to go, oh, so, I guess I got well and truly beaten in the uh, balloon animal experiment stakes. Put it on. Wow, man. Oh, that's cool. It is really good. Charlie, that's pretty Space cool. Space cowboy hat. Cool up. <laughs> Any more experiments which you can devise in which I somehow manage to pip Billy to the, uh, to the prize? Yeah, bring them on. Of course, there's a great tradition of children's entertainers and space, space exploration. Neil Armstrong's zero-gravity punch and duty routine was second to none. And Lord alone knows how Buzz Aldrin managed to produce those rabbits from his helmet. OK, back to the shuttle and some spacemen behaving oddly. Yep, the pilots. Both our pilots are improvisational actors who barely know each other. Drew is actually Canadian. Ivanovich is British. But living in a small MDF box for five days with five other people pretending to be someone you aren't is giving them a chance to get to know each other. But are they acting or not? Your guess is as good as ours. I am writing my memoir in the moment. Uh, in, in Russian? In Russian. In your native Russian there? Native, no, no. What does that mean? Just means less than a man, but in brackets. Less, oh, less standing man. Less of a man, but bigger than an insect. You cannot argue with that. 
can you? I, I wouldn't even know insects. where to begin to argue with that. If Genny likes to, to use dark, cryptic, uh, almost, they sound like folklore, little sayings. Um, uh, that's why he, he, that's why I likened him to a poet earlier. Earth Orbiter wanted to Capcom Crims. Has Kerry made her way back into the lab? Krimsk. It's not Krimsk. 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 You understand? Yeah. Krimsk. Yeah, well, Yevgenin, we, we, is it Yevgenin? I've got, I'm gonna go in there in a minute, and I, I hope it is Yevgenin. Yevgeri, Yevgeri, and that. Oh, well, whatever. I will find out. I'm not being rude. He's brilliant. I find him interesting, really interesting, and he's funny as well. He's sort of got an under. He understands everything what we're saying, and he understands jokes well. But he's got a dryness of a dry sense of humour, and um, Drew is ever such a nice man. He's looked after us, and he's sort of like um, the mother figure, I would say, out of the two. You know, they've been told they have to sit. I know, but I am flight commander yeah, and not really yeah, Exactly. I figured that. I will stand. I thought you would. I will. Thank you. Let's hope that's not pee on the seat. No, no, no. It's not pee on the seat. I, I put the seat up, and I, I am very Don't well. Don't forget to put the seat down. I put the seat down. You know, because when the water comes out, you know, you don't want to wet the seat, you know. With the whole thing. No, I, I washed and it spread on the seat. I mean, a domestic. We, we, you want a domestic? No, I don't want a domestic. What is a domestic? You know, you have it a domestic a, argue, argue, like about, a you argue about having the seat up and down, you know. All right. Thing. I like to take like an a, old a married crap couple, with huh? the seat up completely. Ooh, <laughs> 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 uh, you are crazy like a fox. Like a fox. I like the way Yevgeny orders him around. It just <laughs> makes me laugh. And he's always kind of, uh, yes, commander, no commander. Um, so yeah, I, I, they, they make a nice couple. But you, you, can, you know who wears the trousers in that relationship. Another classic from Flight Commander Yevgeny Ivanovich there. Less of a man, but bigger than an insect. And as he said himself, you just can't argue with it. Now, in the universe that the space cadets inhabit, they are global celebrities. They face the world's media at a press conference after their selection. So it's inevitable the commercial interests will want to jump on their backs. Let's face it, if Linda Barker gets to wield a giant pair of scissors in the Curry's ads for coming second in the jungle, Britain's first space tourists have got to be in the reckoning for some pretty juicy commercial endorsements of their own. It's ka time. Cosmonauts Billy and Paul have been called to the lab. Mission Control has told them that they're about to record a promotional advert for a fictional Russian pharmaceutical company called Chipov. They have just five minutes to learn the script. Right. Are you all right? You look spaced out. No, I've got a cosmic headache. Well, don't let it grind you up. Don't let it grind you up. Take a fast-acting chip-off capsule. They've paid a star so they can advertise on on um, on TV with us. Your headache will be gone in the speed of light. Thirty seconds. How's your headache? What headache? <laughs> 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 chip-off cap. <laughs> I had to pretend that I had a headache. Billy had to ask me what was wrong. I had to tell him that I had a headache. He was to give me some. Uh, pills and um, in a flash I was better. Do it properly now, you start again. Do it properly. It's like a brand of tablets that people in Russia use, which they probably use a lot because they're doing a lot of vodka. How's your headache? What headache? <laughs> <laughs> Bill? <laughs> no, stay there, I'm looking to the camera. Me and Bill, because we got like a good chemistry anyway, just rolled off our tongue. Well, obviously, we had words that they told us to say, but we did it in such a way, in a funny way. Pain relief from the top of your head to the balls of your feet. That was cool. All right, sorry. We do that sort of thing anyway, like um, mucking about and interviewing each other. He does a good Johnny Vaughan, doesn't he? So, well, that's all right. Like. After a brief dress rehearsal, okay. Mission Control yeah. gets the boys to perform their Two, advert. One, action. Are you all right, Paul? You look spaced out. No, actually, they've got a cosmic headache. Capcom Krimsk to Cosmonaut Paul, we don't believe that you have a headache. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and act for you a bit better. What do you mean? You don't believe that I got a headache? You've got to act a bit more. I can't act. Oh, OK. All right, yeah, just... All right, OK. After a nervous start, they finally get to grips with the idea. 
Hey, you right, Paul? You look spaced out. No, actually, I got a cosmic headache. Well, don't let it grind you up, mate. Uh, take a fast-acting chip-off capsule. Cosmonauts Billy and Cosmonaut Paul, there is some doubt over whether you should be touching. Oh. <laughs> 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 He's well, concerned. I'm concerned with my cosmonaut friend, but fine. He gets too concerned sometimes. No touching that. Just, but I'm not allowed to tell anyone. I just care for the guy. <laughs> we will go for a record in mm. five, four, four three. three, two, one, action. Hey, you're right, Paul. You look spaced out. No, actually, I've got a cosmic headache. Well, don't let it grind you up, mate. Yeah, I'll take one of these fast-acting chip-off capsules. It'll get rid of your headache when the speed of light. Hey, Paul, how's your headache? What headache? Uh, Chip-off capsules, fast-acting pain relief from the top of your head to the balls of your feet. Capcom Crimps to cosmonauts Billy and Paul. Thank you on behalf of Chip-off Medicines for successfully completing the promotional advertisement. Yay! Thank you, Chip-off Medicines, and sorry about the touching. <laughs> Please ensure all scripts and instructions are placed back <coughs> in the envelope inside the box and returned to the appropriate drawer. Yeah, we're, we're doing this all the time. Oh, we've done all right there, man. We did fucking good. <laughs> we're just loud, but... <laughs> but this, is, this is Capcom Cruz, so we're forward to one. Uh, speaking of Cosmonauts, Cosmonauts Billy and Paul, could you please... We're not sure about the touching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can mention Chip Off a bit, though, yeah? No references at all. OK, fair enough. Oh, OK. Hello there. Apparently, I can't mention Chip Off uh, again because it's what's called product placement. All a bit of a legal headache, which of course Chip Off could clear up like that by hitting at the heart of. Sorry. We're going to take a break now, and when we return, Kerry and the cadets come so close to the truth, they could touch it. We could just be in a simulator at the moment, and we pull up the shutters, and there's just actually a picture. <laughs> Welcome back to Space Cadets. Let's just see uh, how they're getting on there. Making a bit of a mess by the looks of things. Anyway, uh, they still haven't called the bluff, but they're all getting closer and closer to the truth. Oh, I'm having fun. Cosmonaut Kerry and our man on the inside, Charlie, are talking in the lab. What, do you, what are you sort of hoping for from this? What do you mean? This whole experience. Just the experiences, that's all. Because these are like your memories for life, aren't they? I'm nervous if we get to do a spacewalk, though. I'm scared of, like, a, three, a free fall. No, I'm sure it'll be all right. Yeah. They seem quite competent. Don't you find it strange that we're travelling at 28,000 yeah. miles an hour? Or it just feels like we're on a train. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? We could just be in a simulator at the moment, and we pull up the shutters and there's just actually a picture. <laughs> it's not real to me at the moment. Is yeah, that how you I'm, feel? Well, it's just little moments. It's, it's, it's kind of your brain plays tricks, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, you, we know where we are. Yeah. But then there's just, every so often, you, you, you know, you just think, oh, I'm on a train. Yeah, yeah. And, then, uh, and then, you know, then you look down and see the Earth. And you yeah. go, oh, whoop. My God. Oh, I'm actually yeah. in space. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe there's like, thrusters behind. I know. You know. I, would, I just want to see the whole. Payload bay. Yeah, I want to see a hole from the outside to see because all we've seen yeah. is the front. I, I have no idea what the rest of it looks like. I know we were shown like some diagrams, but yeah. I just can't remember them now. Well, we could see that there was an image in the when we looked through. We could see on, when the pilots were looking at the, sort of mm. the, the shuttle shape. Yeah, yeah. So that was quite. Yeah. That was something. But you know, it's like we have to pick up little bits and bobs yeah. and put them together and yeah, make our brains have to put out. the whole yeah. thing together and make sense of it. Mm. There's a funny thing, I think, in the back of their minds, something is, their, their, their physical sensations of it are trying to tell them something, but their minds aren't willing to accept it because, you know, their reality is so carefully constructed around them. Inside, their body is registering the fact that they haven't physically moved. It feels strange because I know that we're in space, but part of me just feels like I'm on a train. Oh, in, I said in exactly the same thing. Really? Yeah, not a train, but I just said, I, I said we're floating around space in orbit, we're mm. going around the world. I said, mm -hmm. other than that, it just feels like we're in this sort of futuristic cabin yeah. sort of thing. Like. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd be sitting in here for days and you would not even know you were 
in space. In space. Yeah. We were saying when we first got in here, it'd be funny if like a... Uh, it was outside, had... someone was going like this, pushing <laughs> on the outside of the craft. The well, uh, and then I, think they, I think they'd be uh, in a lot of pain yeah, and then for, a very short, <laughs> for a very short time. Well, and then you'd, he you'd hear them say, John, get us a burger, or <laughs> something like that. Pass us that drink, or something. Yeah, yeah, that a good job to have. <laughs> that would be a funny. space rocker. <laughs> that would be uh, something else to see. No quite. Is that like, they, a, they'd they'd be, like an official job? At NASA. Is that, what, did Sorry? Sorry? Is that an contest? official job at NASA, a space rocker? <laughs> space rocker. I think everybody deep down is a space rocker. <laughs> there we go. This time it's Kerry who uh, hits the nail pretty much on the head, saying that the shuttle might well be a simulator. Now, I expect people at home are screaming, so why don't you come out with it? Confront the pilots. Maybe it's because she doesn't want the dream to end. One thing's for sure, there is no shame in being taken in by a simulator. That's what simulators are meant to do, to simulate, meaning the same as. Uh, here's an experiment, actually, you can all do. I discovered it on the way uh, back to London, driving back. I wasn't driving. Uh, but next time you're a passenger in a car, and this is why I wasn't driving, lean against the window, Close your eyes yeah, and just kind of feel the vibrations and the noises. And so just take in the sensations that are happening and ask yourself, is it possible I'm in a simulator and not a real car? Certainly for me, the answer is yes, it's possible. The steady vibration jolts for deacceleration and acceleration, the sound of the engine, just a selection of sensations. It could be a car or a simulator. So if it's not unreasonable to think that the real thing might be a simulator, why is it so strange for someone to think that a simulator might be the real thing. Ah. Okay. Did I sound like tomorrow's world then? A little bit. Okay, back to the shuttle and time for a workout. Here we go. <laughs> Cosmonaut Paul has been working out for 10 minutes now and has some questions for the flight commander about his energy levels. How come I can't do so many sit ups and push ups? Because. On Earth, I can do leads. Well, uh, is this something to do with the speed that we're travelling at? Well, it is, it is probably to do with the fact, quite simply, that you are tired. Is it? The atmosphere is exactly the same. We have simulated it perfectly. Maybe because there is less oxygen no in here and there is a higher quality of uh, quantity of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Is that why you've been falling over? So why you've been falling over. Yeah, we're not falling over, but... Uh, you should. You're falling over because the ship is uh, moving aft and forth. I've got to do ten more push-ups this all. I'll, I'll count you through them. Come on, we get, let's go. One. Two. Three. Right, ready? And four. Come on, you've got to get to ten. Ten, four. Five. That's good. Six. Seven. It is seven. Seven. Come on, Nico, that wasn't one. Eight. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is eight. I'll see eight when I see eight. Come on. That's eight. There. <sighs> nice and slow. Come on. Let's go <sighs> down. Nine, just two more. Nine <sighs> and a half. Nine and three quarters. <sighs> no, you've got to get up from there. Come on. Failure is not an option. I want to see one more, otherwise it's not ten. Breathing. You do your breathing. Yeah. You breathe out on the push-up, okay? Breathe in on the way down, out on the push-up. Breathe it up. That's right, you breathe it up. Well done, ten. That is unbelievable why we get less fit up in space. You're fine. There's a saying, not, uh, not all should be carried away by the wind, not all should be swept away by the broom. Ah. It should all be leveled, it should out. All be leveled out very soon. Ten minutes later, and Charlie's all alone in the lab.
That Charlie's a cheeky chappy, isn't he? But don't worry, Paul gets his own back later. OK, earlier we saw Paul and Billy recording an advertisement for chip-off aspirins. Chip off aspirins, fast acting pain relief from the top of your head to the balls of your feet. Chip off aspirins. Well, the boys obviously caused quite a stir within the Russian advertising industry because now they want all the cadets punting their non existent products. I understand where you're coming from. All four of our cosmonauts have been called to the lab by Mission Control and told that they must record three promotional trails for fictional Russian television and radio stations. We will go for record in five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi, we're the first civilian crew on Earth Orbital One, and you're watching KL2, Russia's only gymnastics channel. Thank you, cosmonauts. You have now successfully recorded your advertisement for the KL2 gymnastics channel. Hands on my head. Would Hold cosmonauts on. please stand in a line? What? Feels like his hand growing out of my head. Without moving your feet unduly, could cosmonauts dance a little? Is this just for their benefit? <laughs> Without moving your feet that much. And continue dancing as you do your line. Uh. Ready in five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi, we're the first civilian crew on Earth Orbital One, and we are loving this funky tune. Thank you, cosmonauts. You have now successfully recorded your advertisement for Radio Boutical Moscow. Oh, that's good. Cool. <laughs> that's. I'm ready for the next one. Cosmonaut Kerry, can you make a gun with your fingers? Point it at the head of Cosmonaut Charlie. Like that? Yeah, facing the camera a little bit. Do it with that, with that. I see. Like that. Cosmonaut Charlie, can you pretend to be cutting the throat of Cosmonaut Paul? What kind of sick channel is this? What does she wrote? What am I going to do? Cosmonaut Kerry, with your free hand, can you uh, pretend to strangle Cosmonaut Billy? Ready to record in five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi, we're the crew on Earth Orbital One, and next on KVP4, Murder She Wrote. <laughs> Thank you, cosmonauts. You have now good. successfully recorded your advertisement trail for KVP4 Murder, She Wrote. There we go. Virtual fame in a virtual world. Well, of course, they've got real fame, I suppose, in a real world, but they must kind of suss it out there, must they? They must think... Ooh. Anyway, a great trail for Murder, She Wrote there. Perhaps they'll get to do the one for Last of the Summer Wine next. I'd love to see the shuttle careering out of control down a Yorkshire Dale, towing a bath or a pram or something. Hilarious. Certainly set the mood nicely for songs of praise. Anyway, time for another break. When we come back, I'm going to do something, uh, yeah, a bit odd. I'm going to go into the back of the shuttle and have a chat with Charlie and cosmonaut Drew Dawson. Risky. <laughs> Welcome back to Space Cadets. Now, in a little while, I'm going to be doing something which might well compromise the whole show. It's a high-risk strategy. On the other side of this hangar door, that's not a wall. I know it looks like a corrugated iron wall. It's not. It's a massive sliding door for what was a hangar where they used to test jets down here. Uh, but in there is the shuttle, and I'm going to go in there. What's so great about that, you're asking? You were in there yesterday. Well, the difference is, tonight I'm going to go the extra yard and actually enter the shuttle, the laboratory bit of the shuttle at the back, through a concealed door where you might have seen uh, Sarah do an earpiece manoeuvre a bit earlier. And uh, I'm going to have a nice little chinwag with actor cadet Charlie and the actor pilot uh, Drew Dawson. What could possibly go wrong? Let's just see if they're lined up there. The two of them should be... Uh, there we go, there's Charlie. Hopefully we can get him and uh, pilot Dawson in the back bit, separated from the other. Hopefully jam the door so the others can't come through. Uh, but it is uh, going to be quite risky. We need the two of them to go through there. Now, if my mission into the lab uh, is going to succeed, 
will have to keep Paul out. He, more than anyone, has enjoyed the experimental work in there and seems to have taken it upon himself to push the scientific barriers with some tests of his own. There's Charlie there. I really need him to sort of separate in there and get away from Paul. But anyway, test one, getting his own back on Charlie for miscounting his press-ups. Test two, the amazing phenomenon of, uh, well, you saw it a bit earlier, and it was extraordinary. Fruit preservation in space could be very tense. It's 3 a.m., and despite the fact they're supposed to be sleeping in shifts of three, everyone has gone to bed, apart from cosmonaut Paul, who's having to entertain himself. I just did an experiment. I ate this apple half an hour ago, and at home, this would be black. A lot easier, well, I suppose, more quickly than here in space. But, so there's an experiment for you. Less bacteria. I suppose. In a way, there'd be less. I don't know if there's filters or something. But carbon dioxide, no, that carbon dioxide wouldn't. Well, that's the bad air that we breathe out. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask True. Constant airflow. A clean air. And no bacteria. It's called this apple not to go off so quickly. <laughs> Should we do another Paul French experiment? It's another experiment. This is a really good experiment. Um, this here, this here is freeze-dried um, ice cream, which actually um, I'm about to taste. And the experiment goes like this. So here's the experiment. I'm going to take another piece. This is the chocolate now. And the experiment is this. How long will it take for Charlie to realise that that is ice cream? Starting from now. I'm in the control room now and I'm about to go into uh, that room there and then into the shuttle. It's a risky one, it could blow the whole game. The walls of the shuttle are paper thin. Well, they're MDF thin, and I could easily be heard. I'm going to have to speak really quietly, which, uh, yeah, I'll be honest with you, I'll be candid. It's not something I'm particularly known for. In fact, I'm known as quite a loud person. Added to that, the floor is littered with kit and equipment and wires. We'll have to go in using infrared cameras, and I rather fear I might be wearing my clumsy shoes. So why am I doing it? Because it's there, and Charlie and Drew are expecting me. OK, here goes. you stop movement on it, because I'll get sick. OK, OK. Right, 
board the shuttle generator around you go. Uh, pretty well so far. Uh, it's uh, a lot easier today than it was uh, yesterday. We're kind of settling in. Were you surprised that the cadets fell for the takeoff? I mean, so dramatically. Um, I was, I wasn't going to be surprised if they did until the sound um, kept going, or the sound cut out, and the the motion kept going. Yeah. So, the, and so I thought, uh, oh no, we it's gone. That's it. You know, they're going to abort, or or they're going to sit there and go, what the hell's going on? Yeah. And somebody's going to come in and go. Uh, sorry, folks, it's a TV show. But then, you know, we kind of just hiccuped for a bit, and then we covered. And then the sound started back up, thank God, and, and oh, God, what a moment. we were... Charlie, just, I, I didn't mean, know about that. I'm just Charlie, I've looked at you, and a couple of seconds, you've had this look of real astonishment at your face. I'm thinking, are there doubts in his mind about, have they actually sent me into space here? Or is he thinking, this is amazing, or is it... Uh, what's going through your mind no, when you look that staggered? Is it just... Acting? I had that. No, I had the thought that... It's a double bluff, and they have put. And I know it sounds like, because my brain has been doing all sorts of flip flops the whole time. Yeah. It did cross my mind that it was an elaborate thing, and that I was actually in space, and that it was a, a kind of anti-meta joke. And yeah. anyway, meta but, joke. Yeah, but uh, uh, do you know that I did, I've just didn't I didn't know until now that the, the beginning was a fuck up. I assumed it was because I, I it all went a bit weird, and uh, and and I was trying to distract the others sort of yeah, lamely yeah. by pretending to be a little bit more scared than yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Although I ended up being quite scared at one point when it was sort of going out there. Yeah, but your face when we let's when we saw Earth for the first time. I mean your face was amazing. I mean you really did look staggered with something mean, blinding acting but Thank you, you very much, thank yeah, you. Were you amazed at the special effects though slightly? Yes. I mean, I was. Is, it, is it easy to kind of be amazed? Because yes. it is quite amazing. Yes, no. Well it, it's it's always easier when you when you can be genuine. You know, when when because it is amazing. The whole thing is amazing. So I'm, a, I'm constantly amazed and baffled anyway. So it's, yeah. it's very easy to play amazed and baffled. So yeah, when I saw it, it was, that was um, stunning. I mean, I, as I said, I was humbled. I have, I have a theory, which is, you know when um, you see those shows about hypnotists on telly? You know, I've, 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 I've never been hypnotised myself, but I've got a couple of mates that have been hypnotised at various stages on those things. And they say, all the while you're doing it, you kind of know the truth, but something drives you on. But yeah. something inside knows. You're not really a dog, definitely. You know, pissing up against around the stage and stuff. But yet, you're, because of the group yeah. dynamic, yeah. you're kind of forced to behave in that way. Is, is there a little bit of that here? Do you think there's a lot of that? You think there's a lot of? Yeah, I, I think that they. I mean, they're constantly be having the, the, the lie reinforced. Like the Richard and Judy thing was stunning. Yeah. It was that has been that just hammered their heads again and again against the yeah. wall. The Queen, you know, following yeah. it. They're so completely, completely believe, and yet at the same time they, they, they don't. There's, there's, they, their brain, there's bits, there's a voice in their head screaming and screaming and screaming and going, "We're in a simulator. This isn't real. We're on the ground." Well, they keep saying little things, and little words keep seeping well, out. It's like, it's like their bodies are trying yeah. to tell them. Yes, it's like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like your mind's telling you yes, but your body yeah. telling you no, yeah. as R. Kelly once said. Yes, but it's, exactly. It's kind of like that, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you think they're going to take it? That's what I want to know. Because I spoke to their friends think... and family yesterday, and they were like, they'll be fine. They'll, you know, they're, they're really, they're here because they'll, they've got a sense of humour, they're practical jokers, and they'll kind of, they'll be that, I knew it kind of moment. But what do you think? Yeah, but I knew it, I said it more than... But it's like, you know, essentially, I keep looking at hatches. I know, it's like, <laughs> is that long? Yeah, yeah. Um, Essentially, they're going to be deprogrammed like that, which is, you know, not usually when people are sort of indoctrinated into a massive cult, which is kind of what this is, you know, it takes them a long while to get deprogrammed. They're just going to literally have, <laughs> oh, fuck, where are we? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And, and I think that they might have a kind of just 10 minute period where they can't really stand up. Yeah. I mean, yeah it's, it, like, yeah. it's like when you, when you get on a ship or something, yeah. you get on a harbour. Yeah. What I'm amazed at, because the cameras move exactly in time, yeah. you can't see there how much this thing's moving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, it, this, is, this is like being on a rough little ferry or it something, is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, definitely. If yeah. you sit in the bunk that lies over the hatch, uh, going to the cockpit, yeah. it's, it's, it's it suddenly reminds... like you're attached to a really creaky hut in a storm. No, 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 it reminds me actually of, of like when I flew Aeroflot once to Bangkok, <laughs> the Russian airline. And, and it was moving like this kind of constantly. And you go, you know, when you're waiting for the loom, yeah. it's that kind of feeling of yeah. mild turbulence, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what you're saying, though, really, Charlie, is about how they react is the trouble with space travel, real or invented, is sooner or later you've got to come back down to Earth. 
yeah. and they're going to come back to Earth instantly, whereas the others obviously get the chance to... Yeah. And it's, yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, listen, Dawson. Dawson. Thank you very much, welcome Thank board. you very much indeed. Thank really you very much. I've been loving your work, man, really loving your work. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do you know what? Um, that's about it for now. It's time for me to get out of here and uh, Charlie and Drew to return to the cage. Tomorrow is the penultimate day of the mission. Uh, the cadets made it, who didn't make it into the shuttle will find out just what's been going on for the last month. So they're going to get the big picture tomorrow. So we've got cadets in the uh, barracks. They're revealed tomorrow and the day after the big one, when I'll see you two again. Uh, so join me then. This has been Space Cadets. I'm off. 10 -hole. See you later, lads. Good job. Live long and prosper. Yes. Live long and prosper. Space Cadets, the satellite show is just starting over an E4 night. And do you think you could cut it as a space cadet? Go to channel4.com slash space cadets to view the lecture notes as well as latest news and exclusive interviews with the experts. You're on Channel 4 next, nothing all day, then two medical traumas come along at once. Jungle is jumpy in Lost. <laughs>